So Seth, firstly, thank you so much for um, you know contributing to the lives of children in India. I'd love to hear what you know someone like you speak to parents so that they can think about something other than what they're used to, which is a really rote uh, system of education in India. So Seth, um, you know, you, you, I'm just going to quote you. Are we going to applaud, push, or even permit our schools to continue the safe? but an ultimately doomed strategy of churning out predictable, testable and mediocre factory workers. Can you talk to parents about why you see education as redundant as it is as it kind of exists today? Well, the future is coming, it is unevenly distributed. So, let's start with the fact that um, there has been an industrialized middle class in my country longer than there has been in India. And so many people who are looking for a better life for their kids are able to say, it would be better for my children to be replaceable cogs in an industrial system than the life I might have had. But what is very clear is that replaceable cogs are getting replaced ever faster. They're getting replaced by machines, they're getting replaced by even cheaper labor from somewhere else, they're getting replaced by uh, low respect, low dignity uh, workplaces. On the other hand, there's a bifurcation going on and there's another kind of job that's available and it is available not just in the United States but in Hyderabad and in many other places in India and that job is a job for someone who's going to ask questions not just know the answer. And the ability to invent a future, the ability to lead is critical. And that is where the rewards go. That is where real dignity and possibility lie. And the problem is if you brainwash your kids for 15 years to do well on a test, and if you push them to do nothing but fill in the blank, they will never learn how to ask good questions. And there's nothing about any country that makes it so that someone's likely or not likely to become that. It's up to the parents and the stories that they tell. And, and I will, I'll give one example from one of my trips to India. Um, I was working with Water Health International, which does uh, water purification systems. And they were having trouble selling the idea of paying for clean water to people in various villages. So what they did was they gave uh, projector microscopes to teachers of kids of eight-year-olds and they projected the water on the wall so you could see all the things swimming around in it and I was in the classroom watching eight-year-olds engaging in a spirited conversation about what they were seeing and the magic of it was there was no right answer there was no curriculum in the sense of now you will repeat back what I said it was ask some good questions right now so we know eight-year-olds can do that. The question is, will we burn it out of them?